what works. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. Uh, my name is Alexander. Uh, I'm um, working at Sturbron. Uh, I'm from Norway, and uh, uh, kind of uh, Sturbron is uh, financial uh, or delivering uh, financial services. And uh, as uh, many companies in Nordics, we started uh, moving from on-prem to cloud and uh, trying to be a cloud native uh, provider. Uh, there are some challenges, but still uh, lots of things can be moved there. And one of the part is uh, basically uh, management of endpoint devices. Uh, and I, as a uh, um, as an offensive security manager, there taking this uh, responsibility to relay the kind of uh, what 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 the posture is it, how what new risks are coming into into something uh, related to that. So uh, a little bit about um, <clears throat> myself. Uh, I, as I said, I uh, work in Norway uh, for Sturbrand. Have a bunch of uh, certificates. Previously worked uh, in a, also in another uh, service provider delivering core services uh, with PCI DSS related stuff, and then also moved to consultancy. So I'm currently having this uh, manager role in in offensive stuff, but. It's funny, you could go to LinkedIn and uh, see about me, but um, you know, uh, it's funny to, to do also uh, search yourself in, in ChatGTP, for example, in that case. And um, uh, as I said, uh, there are lots of uh, things that are true. Uh, also did PhD at the uh, University of uh, Bergen, but sometimes, uh, you know, those hallucination or something, because it's not uh, true. Uh, this red part that uh, focuses, uh, research focuses, I do not do research anymore, basically doing penetration testing. If you Google or do the same with uh, uh, with Sturebron, uh, it's an international company that's uh, working with insurance banking management and pension. This short and sweet. Um, as I uh, mentioned, since we're moving into cloud, uh, this brings a lot of uh, new challenges, right? Uh, first of all, you need to uh, adapt your uh, full internal infrastructure into the cloud, uh, and we successfully migrated, for example, a Swift system together with uh, Microsoft into into Azure and uh, had some other things like, uh, as I mentioned, modern uh, platform or uh, laptop uh, endpoints. This is one of the parts. Um, to be able to understand how does it work uh, via Intune, we have, first of all, um, uh, on the left side, you have a vendor that delivers uh, hardware directly to the end user, right? Uh, this uh, The whole point that you do not go to your uh, IT department anymore. You just uh, get your laptop either to your private uh, home address or to company, and then company basically gives you this uh, as a part, and you set up your computer completely uh, from scratch by yourself. And this is uh, what's uh, provided uh, by... Microsoft we are in tune <clears throat> and since we are on Microsoft stack this uh, our kind of uh, uh, environment where we're going to evaluate security uh, a little bit to, to you who don't know what is kill chain uh, it's not necessary that you could see uh, on the internet where hackers did some sophisticated stuff and then backdoor it and so on and so forth. We also do this. Uh, this is uh, like a kill chain number one example where you could chain several uh, attacks into a part and achieve some flags. Uh, flag could be, for example, getting domain admin or exfiltrate customer data or whatever you want. It could be also another flag uh, set it up. Uh, the whole point uh, of uh, our team is to build those kill chains. It's not necessarily the full chain. But uh, small, uh, small things like number three, for example, we did uh, a couple of steps. Then we believe that the last step is quite uh, uh, critical. We need to fix it regardless. We couldn't keep it until next step. So um, uh, we uh, build those things. And actually, we do not even communicate with, uh, with uh, SecOps or Blue Team at that point. We just keep it uh, until we find something that actually presents risk. Uh, that's why uh, it is important to understand that um, low risks might be a high risk if you change with some some other stuff, right? And we have seen several examples also also publicly known where several low level uh, vulnerabilities in GitHub leads to basically compromise of the whole repository, if you if you like. So this is uh, our part. 
And uh, when we discovered or thinking about threats, uh, we primarily think about uh, uh, kind of uh, insider's threat, which is uh, quite common uh, in the world, uh, not necessary in Nordics because of the culture and other things. But uh, it could be also um, converted into advanced persistent threats. So since we are living and doing 24 over 7 um, uh, red teaming or offensive stuff in the, in the company, we could emulate those APTs that sleep for six months, for example, or one year. Therefore, we do these small things and keep it secretly until we actually uh, present. Um, uh, a little bit about environment. <clears throat> we use uh, the list, uh, the privilege, or, or the principle of list privilege uh, in, the, in the company. It's definitely true. Um, <clears throat> we also use uh, Intune as a MDM, as I mentioned. We do not use ADR in the full stage, uh, step. We turn tune it, and Secops uh, working very uh, hard on having all things uh, available and uh, at maximum security. And the last but not least, uh, requirements for compliant devices and conditional access in Microsoft ID. The last one, it seems not really related to what I'm going to, uh, to talk, but if you look into, um, uh, maybe I'll look, or maybe not. <laughs> I hope it will look. Here we go. Yeah. So, uh, what, what we, when we started uh, looking into uh, those new clients and how we could uh, probably escalate privileges or make back, back doors into it, we started with stupid things. We just tried to log on uh, into our accounts through uh, through VMware, and basically uh, after a couple of uh, minutes, we got access. And uh, the problem with Microsoft stack in that specific scenario that they do not implement this by default. So by default, when you enroll a new device uh, in association with a new user, they gives you kind of 12-hour uh, 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 grace time where your device in Intune seems compliant, but in fact, it's not, com uh, uh, not compliant. And uh, this is uh, necessary to have uh, such a feature because of, for example, BitLocker. BitLocker requires some time, like a couple of hours, to encrypt a disk. And uh, the disk uh, cannot be in compliance mode, uh, mode until it's done. Therefore, if you, uh, if you haven't implemented conditional uh, access with Intune, you might uh, come up with the same uh, issue where uh, you could log on into um, VMware and in case of uh, red teaming or something, which means that if you compromise one identity, you could spawn uh, your own virtual machine somewhere in the cloud and get uh, at least 12 hours of uh, access to company resources, which in most cases is enough to make a little bit more persistent into uh, for the next step. Yeah, this was a kind of a demonstration that it works. When reported it was fixed, basically, we do not allow currently enrollment of devices uh, which are not kind of pre approved. And uh, last uh, theory, uh, or uh, not interesting part, at least uh, from practical perspective, uh, threat and goal. Uh, as I said previously, we are emulating uh, APTs uh, with physical access to PC. And uh, the whole point or the goal is to uh, check where the risk are uh, with respect to MDM and report and do something with the risk after that. Again, focus is uh, kind of those small things, uh, not the full chain, but uh, some small steps that could help us after that. Let's uh, do some uh, short note about uh, backdoor. Uh, we consider if we do this in a real world scenario, we implement something backdoor, like, uh, I don't know, malicious driver probably would be a, a good example where I can install and uh, have uh, right capabilities for uh, from that uh, device after that. Uh, in our example, we, or like a proof of concept, we just do normal privilege escalation. We assume that the user do not have any privileges and the task is to run somehow or get access to this device from the admin perspective. 
And uh, starting with the fun stuff, um, Microsoft luckily has the debug feature. Uh, okay, on, on the right side, this is a uh, uh, screenshot, or even not screenshot, photo <laughs> uh, of uh, of uh, OB experience. Basically, when you receive laptop, you open your um, display, and you get this uh, kind of prompt uh, saying, "Please uh, sign in." Right? When you click sign in, then the MFA and blah 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 happens, and then your enrollment. Instead of G, uh, group policies, you apply iTunes policies, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are not talking about this. We are talking about uh, some other things. And if you're not familiar with the with the whole concept, it's basically running in the Chaos mode, if you if you know, right? It's approximately the same. So you have a full operating system that is running an application that doesn't allow you to do something else except that following those steps, right? Or plus minus. Uh, but uh, as I said, Microsoft has a cool feature called uh, debug mode or command prompt, and uh, basically what you do, you just uh, click Shift F10, right? And when you start Googling Shift F10, it's, it's, it's back, I don't know, Windows 3.1 or something where they have this capability to run, uh, DOS stuff, uh, somewhere or something. I, I was a little bit surprised. But okay, uh, official documentation say that, uh, we did it to edit one user, uh, called U1 and edit to administrators group. So basically what you do after that, uh, you have a backdoor user at that laptop, and you just perform the whole uh, other things uh, as a sign-in, as a normal user. At the end, you could uh, log on uh, as a user to get access to corporate resources, but at the same time, you have a backdoor user, user one, that have administrative privileges, privileges, and these users, user um, stay at, the, at, at your computer, right? At your machine. So from identity perspective or some advanced things where, where you steal something, it's quite difficult to, to get. You, you just need to get, uh, I mean, if you try to <laughs> uh, do trace back, you need to go to this specific la laptop and see what, what users are uh, in local groups. Um, unfortunately, Microsoft does not have a ticket box that uh, say that you can disable this feature and many other features. Uh, but there are lots of uh, uh, examples on the internet uh, representing this stuff, like how you how you actually can uh, secure your environment using using uh, from privileges escalation. And uh, trouble with that, uh, Microsoft do changes in own kind of um, stack and continuously develop uh, developing in tune. And therefore, uh, on the right side, this is very popular uh, how-to uh, manual, but it was also updated because the uh, feature that's worked previously or two, three years ago doesn't work anymore. So therefore you need to do something else. And basically, uh, the, the whole point, you need to hack your, uh, upper, uh, uh, golden image to be able to, uh, implement or disable those features. Okay. Challenge accepted. If, uh, we assume that, uh, this, uh, feature is disabled, what else can we do from the offensive perspective? Um, as I explained, uh, this is a kind of um, uh, Windows in Windows, right? So you, you have a normal software, and therefore all, uh, all other shortcuts also would work. So in that example, for example, uh, in, uh, in the, in the um, middle part, you see that uh, uh, we can run Task Manager uh, basically with, uh, type in control shift escape. And then also use only keyboard to, uh, be able to manipulate with, uh, with the task manager. You could do, uh, alt tap, right? And then basically run new CMD or run any command, uh, exactly in, in the task manager. So, uh, why it's called blind? Because you don't see it. <laughs> Actually, you, you, you don't see it. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you see it only when you do alt tap between, uh, windows. This is the main, uh, kind of, uh, feature. But we still can, uh, uh run this. Even, uh, we implemented via, um, uh, flipper, uh, we, and used, uh, bet USB as a basically sequence of commands that you run and in a couple of seconds you have the whole thing. So it takes like five seconds. 
Yeah, and uh, at the end, as I said, you get uh, full access to um, to the company resources. On the left side, uh, it says that uh, the device is compliant. Uh, on the right side, uh, we have user from the uh, from the company, and uh, on the uh, <coughs> bottom console we have uh, a backdoor administrator user un that's uh, that's uh, our kind of uh, administrator but again remember this is just a simple stuff you could do something more dangerous uh, like rats um yeah you know uh, we thought that uh, cool uh, those features are basically known if you just uh, start googling but there are some other things that are uh, not very known like for example that one where you could uh, do control shift d to export logs and if you're familiar with escapes uh, from kiosks uh, mode or from atms uh, where you have uh, kind of uh, limited uh, uh, you usually do not have mouse, you, you use only keyboard, so in that case you could also use the same kind of technique. So at the first uh, th step you um, enter these diagnostic modes and then basically do magic, uh, sounds like uh, instead of exporting something, you right click uh, on the, um, on the um, computer and then basically say, okay, please open me window, and it just opens you uh, uh, the full uh, kind of explorer. And in explorer, you could again uh, type uh, task manager, and the whole things like in blind stuff will happen there as well. So basically, you bypassing this kind of limited uh, functionality of uh, exporting only log to actually run full commands uh, during OOB. O O B. Yeah, um, and at the end uh, you get uh, kind of such a feature. It's uh, if you run it on a real machine, uh, it still will be blind kind of. But uh, as I said, you could uh, do this only with with a keyboard. And uh, yeah, we tested and it worked very well. Um, if you if you look uh, actually uh, a little bit higher, you know we we discard this Shift FT. We have a uh, blind injection. This uh, expert feature. There's also one more called uh, Control Shift F3, which is basically turn your computer uh, into or you could choose whether you would like to continue in uh, out of box experience or you would like to get into audit mode. And in that case, you basically get the full. Uh, screen like desktop and could do whatever you want and since the device itself is uh, added as trusted in 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 tune uh, you can potentially after that by, bypass all those uh, conditional access uh, uh, which require compliant device right but um, it's cool uh, but uh, we didn't stop here we actually uh, reported this back to our team we discussed a lot of things and if we try to map uh, this into NIST SSF 2.0 uh, we identify this a backdoor right uh, from pr uh, protection perspective there are yeah, several methods to actually cope with this uh, problem um, from detection and response perspective this is a cool uh, part because uh, threat hunting on PC sets who actually do this, right? Is there anyone who monitor this? No, okay. Yeah. And uh, also correlation with valid uh, uh, requests because sometimes users uh, need to reset PCs because of, you know, some issues or uh, troubles with software or whatever. Um, yeah. Also, recovery, uh, most likely you will uh, uh, block the PC and uh, that's uh, kind of uh, attempted to be reset and uh, you probably need to do something and do an investigation after that. Um, Again, back to this, and uh, as I said, it's it's cool, but we didn't stop there because we believe that APTPs have access to internal resources, so what else can we do on top of this? Um, we uh, found a way basically saying that, uh, okay, 
great. Since we are having access to the, or assuming that we have an access to the uh, machine, at least the initial one, uh, we could potentially do something else. And uh, since Microsoft providing BitLocker keys with Intune uh, as a part of the user experience, so you, the whole point is just to uh, simplify IT uh, communication, especially IT support. So instead of calling uh, to IT support and saying, hey, uh, I need my BitLocker key and blah, 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 you could go to the portal, uh, to your portal, uh, to your devices, and basically say that, yay, you know, uh, what is my uh, key for this specific device? And Microsoft likely will give you this information, which is quite cool, because if you have BitLocker key, you have uh, basically everything. You can do whatever you want after that with your machine, because uh, uh, disk, uh, the hardware or um, SSD is not encrypted anymore, or encrypted, but you have a key to decrypt it. So what we uh, started doing uh, uh, with this information, we have a BitLocker key, uh, and uh, the goal is to enter uh, so-called Windows RE, Windows Recovery Environment. Uh, Microsoft did a very good job the, uh, recently. They basically do not allow reset your PCs uh, uh, from your laptop, so you cannot reset your own PC from the same PC, but you could go uh, online again to another portal and <laughs> click on uh, please reset it, and it will initiate the procedure. But uh, there are um, several other options available. So um, in recovery mode, you have the, uh, the things like, uh, for example, uninstall updates and blah, 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 but also command prompt. This is probably ultimate goal for us, since if we can run something in CMD, we most likely can run uh, whatever we want at that, at that point. Um, I do not want to stop on the left side. Microsoft <laughs> has a very good description of this. Basically, uh, if you cannot do a normal method of going into uh, RE mode, like previously uh, from the logon screen, you could uh, uh, do like shift, uh, shift and reboot, and it will enter into recovery mode. If you have access to laptop, uh, you could basically run shutdown with minus O option, which also do the same stuff, but Microsoft has a very good description, like you need to reboot a couple of times to be able to <laughs> enter uh, in RE mode. It would work regardless of other, any, any, any other functionality because it's a part of uh, kind of recovery procedure. And with this, uh, we did a simple stuff like, okay, since we can run uh, things, uh, we would like to run a console on the login screen. Uh, luckily, we did it as a proof of concept, of course, but it's OPSEC insecure. Basically, we got a mail saying that uh, you need to remediate uh, issues because ADR uh, run on the platform, which is uh, detecting this functionality very easily, and uh, binary is not signed, and so on and so forth. So th this is pretty easy to detect. And we said, okay, fine. Uh, we need to accept this challenge and do something that. So instead of uh, basically uh, going just in uh, um, our emote, we decided to get live USB. I'm not sure, actually, I was thinking yesterday why it's actually worse, because, as you know, disabling secure boot shouldn't work. What you actually do here is sort of disable secure boot uh, load from any Linux distribu uh, distribution, then use uh, dislocker to actually unlock the disk and uh, have a full access to your uh, hardware, or, um, I mean, to your system disk. And uh, for example, use uh, change uh, password to activate or clean password for administrators, which is uh, quite common. And then again, enable secure boot and load normally. From me as a Previous cryptographer, it looks like strange because Secure Boot is designed to uh, detect any temper into uh, the process of booting. In that case, it, it doesn't work. No, no, why? Nevertheless, the whole point here at the end, we have uh, we have uh, two users, administrator, which is legit administrator of the PC, and uh, my user that uh, we use internally for, for corporate stuff, right? And on the left side, you see that uh, IDR did not detect this as a malicious because who detected that? Okay, someone is running administrator on PC, right? 
And uh, also interesting fact that uh, this change point uh, manipulate with SAM, basically manipulates with register, and for some reason uh, Microsoft do not detect uh, these changes uh, on the next boot. Don't know. But this is uh, good for us. Uh, for World. There's an entire computer subculture hereabouts, not just children, adults, professionals and amateurs. What they're interested in, the software that's on display here, is unlocking the little key that protects it, cracking that code, getting into the system, either for sheer devilment or for making large sums of money. These are the hackers. Until now, the computer hacker has been seen affectionately as a skilled technocrat, beavering away obsessively in his den, a harmless crank exploring the international computer networks for fun. But today it's clear that any computer anywhere can be broken into and interfered with for ulterior motives. The technocrat has mutated to the technopath. kick off Area 41 2024, please welcome to the stage the Area 41 core organizer team consisting of Philip, Tom, Adrian, Candid, and Stefan. Uh, part since we can basically embed it, embed whatever we want and be undetected uh, by IDR. If you have this advanced uh, attack, so you at the end will uh, will have your code and initial point or starter point would be uh, unknown to Blue Team. Yeah, um, therefore we discussed a little bit uh, how to bypass out of box experience to uh, uh, have a backdoor. We also discussed a little bit uh, on BitLocker, recovery key and uh, other things. But there are, when you look into a little bit higher perspective, you have a little bit more uh, options to to use. And uh, on the right side, uh, it's our out-of-box uh, out experience. On the left side, it's uh, kind of uh, um, emulated phishing attack with uh, getting bit locker key and then stealing PC uh, as, a, as a second part, right? And then backdooring this PC and therefore you have a compliant devices with your uh, malicious code. But there are uh, several other options uh, that we haven't uh, finished yet to 
uh, to test, but there are several optionality uh, options like uh, uh, connect to Wi-Fi. And when you connect to Wi-Fi, there is a huge process going there, so you could potentially embed your, uh, first of all, uh, proxy servers into these certificates. Like, okay, the simple scenario when you have a guest portal, right? Uh, in the guest portal, you need to type uh, login admin, but instead of this, you could uh, uh, um, you could uh, log, uh, log on into something and probably uh, abuse uh, Explorer or Internet Explorer Edge. In that case, it would be uh, probably the good uh, way uh, to say uh, Explorer A Edge to be able to escalate privileges uh, and run malicious codes. Code. If not, then probably you could import uh, CA certificate as a root, and then uh, with connection with, uh, with connection to proxy servers, you could potentially read all traffic in clear text if you be able to uh, wrote it somewhere in the cloud. Uh, last but not least, uh, Windows Hello, uh, another feature from Microsoft where instead of uh, uh, your password, you type PIN code. There are some possibilities to enhance this, but in, in, in practice, uh, I, what I've seen as a consultant and also uh, yeah, in other companies, uh, companies usually prefer something like uh, six, uh, six to eight digits and this is basically open your uh, laptop. And uh, recent changes into the whole processes leads to the feature that when you enter this code, you actually open basically certificate that's stored in, in, on, on your laptop. And this certificate is a valid authentication uh, credentials to whatever you want. So basically, if you got uh, this pin code, you can access uh, whatever you want. Also bypass MFA because the same uh, code can be used there, right? And coming back to BitLocker and other things, so you basically get access to the whole thing that we discussed previously. Uh, and that's why uh, you probably might uh, interested in why this elephant there. Uh, the whole point is that uh, our Recommendations to to the to the password previously was to, to have some uh, strange phrase instead of using something like Studio Brown one two three as a password. Please use some meaningful stuff uh, and would be useful for you, like a blue elephant drone flea dancing right on the roof of the building, which is uh, quite easy to memorize, but at, uh, from um, attacking perspective, it's quite difficult to hack it or crack it, if it would be a case. But uh, in case of pins, it doesn't make sense. So uh, the whole things and conclusions back, uh, from from that, um, basically, it, it's not a new feature. It's just that it summarized and extended uh, a little bit uh, functionality. But back 2020, Microsoft said that this is not a security feature. It's uh, by design, and we do not believe so. Nevertheless, it depends on how do you uh, uh, evaluate your threat actors. If you think that it is, then okay. Uh, from the uh, blue team perspective, or uh, what you could do in your company is uh, to improve security. Uh, actually, do not think about protection. It's quite difficult to protection to protect about uh, from from getting out of OB. Uh, but uh, rather, I would say that you need to spend like 20% uh, effort uh, with respect to threat principle to, on detection and response capabilities. If you can detect those things and think a little bit globally how you could actually uh, <laughs> detect uh, undetectable, put like that, because ADR doesn't work, what you could do after that. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the challenge that we we work with in, in the Purple team uh, setup. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Even with the delayed start, we kept in the times. So that's awesome, dude. Thank you so much. <laughs> we were going to give you more time if you needed it, but we made it. That's good. Great. So we actually still have a couple more minutes for questions. If anyone has any, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll bring you the mic. Don't be shy. Anyone have any questions? No? One. Come on. Let's go. Give me one sec. First, thanks for the talk. Um, in the first scenario, uh, you were like bypassing with a VMware. 
So there was the, the thing that the 12 hours, um, window where the device is compliant and you abused it because you created like a new or you registered a new computer and it's anyway compliant and then you used VMware to log in, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And this is uh, by default also, it's, I mean, if you think about this a little bit from blue perspective, so uh, you probably need to restrict the number of devices that user can register, right? By default, I guess it's 10 or something, so also coming from legacy stuff.